a very warm welcome to all of you who are here today in this building and all of you who are watching online. And the first question that I'm going to put before us right now that you can either think on in your head or share with the person that's next to you is why do we come to church? So I'll leave that one with you for a minute. It's really lovely to hear that the baby has something to say about that as well. And I'm sure if we could understand it, it would be something profound. God speaks to his children too. <laughs> and we are indeed his children. And that's what we're hoping for this morning through his Holy Spirit, that he will speak to our hearts. And there will be many things, I'm sure, that have come into your minds or that you've shared with the person next to you. But I wanted to start this morning with Psalm 84 because... I sure, I'm sure that we would all admit that there are times when we come to this building when we're not, shall we say, in the mood or we're not in the place that we would like to be with God. And this Psalm 84 is really challenging when we hear about somebody or a group of people who are yearning, yearning to be in the house of God. And on a pilgrimage, so often we are yearning for something, aren't we? Um, some of you might be watching the program Pilgrimage at the moment. And so often we're looking for something. And God has the answers. So if I could ask my five young people to come up onto the stage, they're going to share with you now Psalm 84. I've got your pieces of paper, guys, if anybody hasn't got one. So I need you, Lord, first. There you go. Uh -huh, are you okay with that? Okay, lovely. And Janice, you, you're okay? You've got yours, or do you want that one? Lovely. And Roshan, are you okay with what you've got? Lovely. You see, so organized, aren't they? Right, now I'm going to move this across a bit because we have to fit you. So if we start you off over here, so if you could come over here. So always go to the back, and I'll move the stand in a minute. Can you... Come along, guys. It's just fitting them all on the camera. Thank you, Martin. Great. Lovely. Right. Okay. And I'll get out the way. Over to you. Oh. Would help, wouldn't it? See, they're organizing me. That's what children do. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow of the nest for herself. Where she may have her young, a place near your altar, Lord Almighty, my King and God. Blessed are those who dwell in the house. They are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength till every... Each appears before God in Zion. Hear my prayer. I need Hear my prayer, all God Almighty. Listen to me, God of Jacob. Look on our shield, O God. Look with favour on your anointed one. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favour and honour. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk is blameless. Lord Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts in you.
often use the word yearn, do we? He's yearning for the courts of the Lord. So let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the freedom that we have to come together to worship you right now here at GBC, also at the Beacon Centre and watching online. We lift up those from our fellowship who are currently taking a break and may be worshipping elsewhere. Thank you that blessed are those who dwell in your house. Thank you that you are our strength and shield. Help us now to still our hearts, to be open to going deeper into our relationship with you and to focus on hearing from you with the expectation of meeting with our awesome living God. We give you our worship and praise. Amen. Morning. Uh, stand up. That would be wonderful. You hear me when I call, you are my morning song. Though darkness fills the night, it cannot hide the light. Whom shall I fear? You crush the enemy underneath my feet. You are my sword and shield, though troubles linger still. Whom shall I fear? I know who goes before me. I know who stands behind. The God of angel armies is always by my side. The one who reigns forever. He is a friend of mine. The God of angel armies is always by my side. My strength is in your name, for you alone can save. You will deliver me, yours is the victory. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? I know who goes before me, I know who stands behind. The one who reigns forever, he is a friend of mine. The God of angel armies is always by my side. And nothing comes against me just then. Who 
to your word and see your awesome faithfulness. We look to the earth and glimpse your beauty. We look to the stars and see your majesty display. The heavens above declare your glory. We join with the angels singing, holy, holy, holy. We stand with creation, crying, worthy is the Lord. And every knee shall bow, and every tongue confess that you are God. Son and find a love that never fails. We look to the cross and see your mercy. We look to the grave empty because you rose again. Oh, glorious one, you reign in power. troubled sea. Whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence you won't let go. In the questions your truth will hold. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea. lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness, I will follow you, oh, my lighthouse, my lighthouse, I will trust the promise, you will carry me safe to shore, whoa, oh, 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 oh. safe to shore, whoa, oh, oh, oh. safe to shore, whoa, oh, oh, oh. safe to shore. Fear what tomorrow brings With each morning I'll rise and sing My God's love will lead me through You are the peace in my troubled sea Whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea My lighthouse, my lighthouse Shining in the darkness I will follow you, oh my lighthouse 
house I will trust the promise You will carry me safe to shore whoa, oh, 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 oh. Safe to shore whoa, oh, 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 oh. Safe to shore whoa, oh, 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 oh. Safe to shore Fire before us You're the brightest You will lead us through the storms Fire before us You're the brightest You will lead us through the storms Fire before us You're the brightest You will lead us through the storms Fire before us You're the brightest You will lead us through the storms My lighthouse My lighthouse Shining in the darkness, I will follow you, oh, my lighthouse, my lighthouse. I will trust the promise, you will carry me safe to shore, whoa, oh, 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 oh. safe to shore, whoa, oh, 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 oh. safe to shore, whoa, oh, 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 oh. safe to shore. So we're going to have our family news time now. Um, we have Families Venture at 4 and the McCartney House Service at 4.30 and Youth this evening at 6. And Daniel's just going to come up now and talk a bit about Toolbox and Together. Good morning. Uh, this week you um, should have received an email about um, our toolbox for this term. Um, if you haven't received that email, um, maybe it has disappeared somewhere in a junk folder, um, or you press red without reading it, um, or maybe you don't receive our emails. If you don't receive our emails, um, then everyone's welcome to receive them. Um, please sign up um, just to keep across of all the different things that are happening as part of life here at God Manchester Baptist Church. The toolbox um, email um, is the uh, different activities, events, a uh, reminder of that, that importance of discipleship for each one of us. That as we know about God, that each of us can continue to grow in our relationship with God. We can learn more about who God is, more about how we can follow him, become more of his disciple. And the toolbox is a, a, a um, collection of different courses, groups, opportunities um, for you to um, access um, what, what makes sense to you at this time. And uh, just really encourage you to prayerfully read through that. Um, for some of you, that's been part of a weekly small group. Uh, for some of you, that's about doing um, a one-off course, a one-off um, event. Um, some of you, that might be doing a, a longer course. There's a real variety in there. I'm not going to go through them all uh, this morning, um, but just to highlight the importance of it. Um, and also to say that some of them are starting this week coming. So if you thought to yourself, I'll look at that in a couple of weeks, um, you might miss the thing you want to do. So um, please have a look at it. Um, if you're um, not able to make those dates, but you think to yourself, I'd love to do that, always feed that information in because it helps us as we plan future, thinking about doing it again maybe or at different times during the week. Um, so please always feed those pieces of information in because they really help us. Um, but really encourage you to have a look at it, prayerfully consider it, and, and then sign up. Let us know you're coming because that helps us as well. A um, couple of weeks ago, um, you also received our Together um, email to about those opportunities for us to be together, those opportunities for us to um, have fun together. Not that we don't have fun here, before anyone says that. But the opportunities have fun together to meet people from other parts of church life, um, perhaps other congregations, and a really good opportunity for us to invite people, um, friends, um, family members to come along and be part of church life here in a, in a different way. Um, so if you didn't receive that email, please, again, um, either scroll back or ask us to resend it to you. Um, our next Together event is an international meal on the 12th of May. That means we need lots of you involved. So if you are someone who thinks to yourself, I could bring a meal, I could bring, not a whole meal, a, a um, dish from um, my culture, from my country, um, then please speak to us as we start to put together, hopefully, a large menu and lots of us will be able to come and eat foods from around the world is the plan. Um, so please um, be thinking about that. Think about who you can invite. Think about what you might bring from your culture. 
Thank you, Delia. So continuing on with family news, our next church members meeting is on Monday the 29th of April at 7.30pm and papers will be sent out to members during the coming week. Um, we're really looking forward to celebrating the marriage of Paul and Karen here at GBC on Wednesday at 4 o'clock. Paul and Karen would be glad for as many of their friends as possible from GBC to join in the celebrations so if you are able to attend and would like to stay for the reception afterwards, please let the church office know for numbers for catering. And Paul and Karen are planning an informal occasion, so please wear whatever you are comfortable in. Taking a bit of risk there, aren't they? So you could come with your dinosaur outfit on if you want to. So we're going to have the opportunity to pray for Paul and Karen in a minute. So I'm just going to pray, and then the children and young people will be going to their groups. Oh Lord, we do thank you for your provision. We thank you for the blessings that you have given us in abundance here at GBC. We thank you, Lord, for the offering that has been made this morning and by many through bank accounts. Please, Lord God, may we use it to your glory. And Father, we pray for our young people. We ask, Father, that you would be close to them, that they would open their hearts to receive from you, and that they would leave this place with a clearer understanding of who you are and the way that they can impact the lives of others through sharing your gospel. Amen. So if the children and the young people would like to go to their groups... And we're now going to continue with prayer. And Jackie and Clive, Joseph, are going to be leading us in prayer. And Sarah will be leading us with the Bible reading for us to focus on God through his word. And we're really thrilled to have Peter Nodding here with us this morning, who is going to share about what it is he believes God has laid on his heart for us. So if I could ask Jackie and Clive to come forward, thank you. Good morning. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the amazing privilege we have of coming into your throne room. Thank you, Lord, for your amazing love to us in Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that because that curtain was torn from the top to the bottom, we have this amazing relationship and then come into your presence. We thank you, Lord, that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Lord, we ask you, we're conscious as we come before you that you're a holy God. And we're conscious, Lord, that we are anything but... Lord, we ask you to forgive us now through the precious blood of the Lord Jesus. But Lord, we thank you as well that we come to you in, in royal robes we don't deserve because of your great love for us. Lord, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And Lord, we recognize your sovereignty over the, the world as we see it. Lord, it's a troubled world. We are conscious, Lord, of the conflicts that are raging at the moment, particularly in the Middle East. But Lord, we thank you that you're in control and we declare your lordship and your authority in this situation now. Father, we pray for wisdom for world leaders, world leaders who will be meeting the, the, <coughs> this afternoon and even the, the G7 and, uh, and the Security Council. Father, I pray that you will stay the hand of evil men. And I pray, Father God, that, the, the, that your kingship might be very evident. I pray particularly, Lord, for, for believers, for Christians in these situations, for Christian leaders, but also for Christians in the, in the individual countries in the Middle East at the moment, that you will give them 
uh, your shalom and you'll give them the ability to, to trust and to know and to be confident in, in you. And Father, I pray the same for your people in, in Ukraine. Pray, Lord, that your uh, righteousness and justice might prevail in, in, this, uh, in this situation. Lord, you really, we really want you to see, uh, see your, king, your kingship exerted in, in this situation. Father, we, we think, thinking nearer to home, we pray for our, our country leaders here, and we pray for our royal family. We also pray, Lord, for Christian leaders in this, this country, that at times of, of uh, where they really need your particular wisdom, pray, Father God, that the, you've promised wisdom through your word. And Lord, we covet that now for, for our leaders, that, our, that we might become again a nation that, uh, that trusts in you, and again a nation that turns back to you. Lord, we thank you that we can ask all these things confidently as we ask them in and through the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's spend some time now praying for the church and the leadership team, friends and family and ourselves. We will spend a few minutes on each area. Thanking God for all he has done knowing he hears our prayers and will answer in his way and in his time. So let's first look at the church and our leadership team. Give them wisdom. We uh, lift up Paul and Karen uh, on Wednesday as they start a new life together. We think of Rita who's back at home. Um, and also lift up John and Di, as you some may know, uh, they were on a cruise to the Azores and Di had a fall and broke her arm. She is, they are still in the Azores and pray for the hurdles to be overcome. And anyone else that you know who needs a special touch from God. So let's just spend a few minutes. Spend a few minutes now thinking about your own friends and family. Finally, let's think about ourselves. Thank God for all he has done. Bring your challenges, your difficulties and needs to him. Thank you, Lord, for all these prayers, spoken and unspoken. Thank you for all your blessings and be with us as we go into the coming week. Hear my prayer, O God Almighty, listen to me, O God of Jacob. Leave all your prayers at the foot of the cross. Thank you, Lord. Nothing can separate Even if I ran away Your love never fails I 
I know I still make mistakes, but you have new mercies for me every day. Cause your love never fails. You stay the same through the ages. Your love never changes. There may be pain in the night, but joy comes in the morning. And when the oceans rage, I don't have to be afraid. Because I know that you love me, and your love never fails. together for my good you make all things work together for my good you make all things work together for my good you make all things work together for my good Stay the same through the ages. Your love never changes. There may be pain in the night, but joy comes in the morning. And when the ocean drink, I don't have to be afraid because I know that you love me and your love never. Your love never fails Your love never fails Your love never fails Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaken. I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. He's never let me down. He's faithful through generations. So why would he fail now? He won't. He won't. 
I've still got joy in chaos. I've got peace that makes no sense. So I won't be going under. I'm not held by my own strength. Cause I've built my life on Jesus. He's never let me down. He's faithful in every season. So why would he fail now? He won't. He won't. He won't fail. He won't fail. He won't. He won't. He won't fail. He won't fail. No, he won't. Rain came, wind blew, my house was built on you. I'm safe with you, I'm gonna make it through. Rain came, wind blew, my house was built on you. I'm safe with you. I'm gonna make it through. Yeah, I'm gonna make it through. Cause I'm standing strong on you. I'm gonna make it through. Cause my house is built on you. Yeah, I'm gonna make it through. Cause I'm standing strong on you. I'm gonna make it through Cause my house is built on you Christ is my firm foundation The rock on which I stand When everything around me is shaking I've never been more glad That I put my faith in Jesus He's never let me down. He's faithful through generations. So why would he fail now? He won't. He won't. He won't fail. He won't fail. No, he won't. He won't, he won't fail, he won't fail, no, he won't, he won't, he won't fail, he won't fail. Now he won't, he won't, he won't fail, he won't fail, he The reading today is from 1 Kings, chapter 17, starting at verse 7 and through to the end. This is on page 358, if you want to follow it in the church Bibles. Sometime later, the brook dried up 
because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him, that's Elijah. Go at once to Zarephath in the region of Sidon and stay there. I have instructed a widow there to supply you with food. So he went to Zarephath. When he came to the town gate, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and asked, Would you bring me a little water in a jar so I may have a drink? As she was going to get it, he called, And bring me, please, a piece of bread. As surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread. Only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jug. I am gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said. But first, make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me and then make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. The jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the land. She went away and did as Elijah had told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. For the jar of flour was not used up and the jug of oil did not run dry in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. Some time later, the son of the woman who owned the house became ill. He grew worse and worse and finally stopped breathing. She said to Elijah, what do you have against me, man of God? Did you come to remind me of my sin and kill my son? Give me your son, Elijah replied. He took him from her arms, carried him to the upper room where he was staying and laid him on his bed. Then he cried out to the Lord, Lord my God, have you brought tragedy even on this widow I am staying with by causing her son to die? Then he stretched himself out on the boy three times and cried out to the Lord, Lord my God, let this boy's life return to him. The Lord heard Elijah's cry and the boy's life returned to him and he lived. Elijah picked up the child and carried him down from the room into the house. He gave him to his mother and said, look, your son is alive. Then the woman said to Elijah, now I know that you are a man of God and that the word of the Lord from your mouth is the truth. Well, good morning to you all. I must say, you give a very warm welcome to me when I come amongst you. That's uh, very encouraging. And uh, I know some of you reasonably well and remember your names, so that's also encouraging to me. So that's great to be with you. And it's good to be uh, just looking at this really important subject of Elijah. I did listen to Richard online, and uh, so I will repeat one or two things that he shared with you, but actually repetition is good if these things get into our hearts. Elijah is such an interesting person, appearing both in the Old and in the New Testament. The one verse I like about you, right, Elijah, is that... He was just like us when he talks about his very effective prayers. This is in James chapter 5. I mean, a huge man of prayer. And then it goes on to say, he's just like us. 
which uh, gives us encouragement to think that we also can be graspers of God and be strong in prayer. Now, he's different from most prophets in that he just appears in 1 Kings 17. Sometimes you get a bit of introduction about who the prophet is. It might say, and the word of the Lord came to so-and-so, who was the son of so-and-so. But you don't get any of that with Elijah. He just appears. Elijah from Tishbe. He's a very unusual man. He seems to have quite a stern character. But no one can doubt his real zeal for God. In fact, the meaning of his name, my God is Yahweh. My name is the Lord. Although he's an unusual person, God used him mightily. And this reminds us that if people are somewhat unusual, and we can sometimes write them off for their unusual aspects to their character, well, don't write them off too quickly because the Lord loves us all and he loves to use us. And he may use that person mightily because they want to honor him. Now, you need to know some background. Oh, yes, I need to get my little plonker. <laughs> you need to know some background to this story to get the full force of what's taking place. Because Elijah's God is also our God, but there are another two gods in this story which will help us to see what is taking place. So, for example, there's the God of Baal, and he was a storm god, and he was supposed to control the weather. So, therefore, he could make it rain when he wanted to make it rain. But there was also a god who was called Mot, and he was the god of death. And if there was no rain coming after the summer, then the god of death, Mot, had caused that to happen. So there was somewhat rivalry between these two gods. But we'll see that the god of Elijah had power over these two gods. You'll see how they come into play as we go forward. So basically, if there was no rain, Baal was submitting to another god called Mot. And Mot was the god of death, as I explained. It was like the death of the summer, but then the rain came in the season after that. But let me just... Uh, remind you of one or two things that I'm sure were picked up last week. I can't see that very clearly, but he was trying to get away from Ahab. Ahab is the king of Israel. Uh, that's the northern kingdom. And so God told him to go to Kerith, and you can see where Kerith there is on the screen. And whilst he was there, he was being fed by ravens. Ravens aren't very generous birds, they don't usually look after people, and that's, again, something of the miraculous that is taking place. And then he's told to go to Zarephath, and Zarephath there over is in Phoenicia. And that's where Jezebel came from. Jezebel is Ahab's wife, and she worshipped different gods in that area, including Baal and Mot. And so he's taken there to be alongside that widow in Zarephath. So I want to say three things about Elijah. All of them have some importance about them. And let's ask that they continue to be true about us or even more true as we invest in our relationship with God. And the first thing to say is that Elijah is hearing from God. He's hearing from God. And he's hearing a number of important things. Now, I've noticed in the last 10 or 20 years or so that the whole business of hearing from God has become more important in churches. It has in the church that I belong to. 
And I sense sometimes when we've been making that emphasis in our own church that there are some people who say, oh, no, not hearing from God again. And it's partly because they think, I don't hear from God very well. And they keep pumping out this hearing from God, and it just depresses me rather than encourages me. So I always want to try and find ways to help people to know that they are hearing the Lord, because a lot of us are hearing the Lord a lot of the time, but not realizing it. Somebody said, generally speaking, God is generally speaking. And he does. He speaks to us in a variety of different ways. And as is to understand all of that. Very important. Foundational in our Christian walk, actually. So there are a number of things that Elijah had heard. So, for example, he knew the reason for the drought. He must have heard this from God. He must have done. Because he went on to pray that the rain would stop. But what I like about Elijah is that he doesn't say the Lord will stop the rain and it will only start when the Lord makes it rain again. He says there'll be no more rain except by my word. That's an authoritative statement. Elijah's particularly in touch with what the Lord was doing and saying and he was able to be with the Lord in bringing the rain to start again. That's in a later chapter that I'm sure you'll pick up. He was also told to go to Kerith and then fed by the ravens, ravens, as I said. And he was basically getting out of the way of Ahab, King Ahab, who wanted to do away with him. And then he sent off to Zarephath. Again, he's here in the Lord. He's been in, in Kerith and now he moves to another place called Zarephath, to a widow. And Zarephath is about 90 miles from Kerith. And this is Jezebel's territory. In one sense, it was the place not to be, but the Lord has a way of putting us in difficult situations to prove his protection and also his leading. And it was also the place of Jezebel's gods, Mot and Baal. Now, sometimes God only tells us of some things more immediately. And I think he received a more immediate word as he's talking to this widow. Because there he is, and he discovers that she's only got so much flour. In fact... It's the last meal before they die. And so then he says, I want you to prepare a meal for me. And then you can prepare a meal for yourself and your son, which sounds pretty selfish, of course. But I believe at that point, he's also receiving a word from the Lord. It's more immediate at that point. And the word is that you're just going to go on getting more flour and oil out of this whole situation. It's going to keep coming. That's what happened. I don't know how long Elijah was with this widow, but the flour and the oil, it just kept flowing and flowing and flowing. That must have been a real encouragement to all of them, but especially to Elijah. I don't know about you, but when you sense that you've been part of something that God has done, and then there are ongoing ramifications of it, You just feel the strengthening in your heart to say, I thought the Lord was going to do that. And now the Lord's done it and he continues to do it. And we're with him in that whole process. So my prayer for myself and for all of us is that we will learn to go on hearing the Lord and then to act upon it. Now, actually, um, I'm feeling a bit detached in my hearing at the moment because both of my ears have got lots of wax in them and I'm having them syringed on Tuesday. I don't know whether you're like me, but I have to have that to happen to me every few months. 
And so that's going to happen on Tuesday. And so I'm not hearing brilliantly. Uh, I have hearing aids, but, you know, because they're blocked up, you know, this isn't so good at the moment for me. But actually, because my ears are blocked up, it doesn't mean that I can't hear the Lord. Because it's nothing to do with physical healing. It's to do with a whole group of other factors as well. And sometimes we get it right and sometimes we get it wrong. So yesterday, for example, um, we went out on our monthly outreach. We have an outreach at our church uh, in the summer months. And we put up, you know, a, a big marquee. No, it's not a marquee. It's um, what you put up in the garden. See, I'm not eating very well. That's right, it's a gazebo. It's a gazebo, and you know, it's got three words on it. Listen, pray, and hope. And uh, the day before I went down, I said to the Lord, is there something that you can show me uh, that um, might come about tomorrow? And immediately, I felt I saw a lady, and she had sort of different colors in her hair. So when we meet for the team meeting, before we went out, I shared this with them. I said, of course, I could be up the pole. And, you know, that might be nothing to do with it. I'm just imagining it. So I looked for this lady, you know, for the hours that I was there. <laughs> she didn't appear. <laughs> so I don't fully know what that's about. But actually, it doesn't put me off asking the question of God, please speak to me. Because... You know, a lot of the times, he's good to me, and I think it, it doesn't it work itself out. Sometimes it doesn't. Or maybe I'll meet that lady later this week. Who's to know? And maybe it's a preparation for something else. But he does want to speak to us. And in our own different ways, we need to learn. The other thing about yesterday's outreach was that when we prayed on Zoom on Monday before the Saturday, we were praying together, and I thought the word hope is going to be really important. You know, maybe people that we speak to, their hope in their hopeless situation might change. And then on that morning, the Saturday morning, one of my readings was Romans 15, verse 13, which talks about the God of hope who will fill you with all joy and peace in believing. And so I shared that as well. In fact, that was common to one or two of us in our prayers. And so the Lord was speaking to us in that way. He's Elijah, and he's picking up some pretty deep stuff from God. And we are not Elijah but God wants to use us just as much as he might use Elijah. So that's the first point then. The second point, oh, there she is with her oil, of course. That's right. The second point is that Elijah needs to press further into God. He needs to press further into God. And I think there are two reasons why this is the case. First of all, Elijah isn't the finished product. He looks like the finished product. Wow, if we had the anointing of Elijah, wow, that would be absolutely wonderful. But at this point, he's not the finished product, and he still needs to press further into God. And the reason I say that is that often the Lord will put us in secluded places out of the busyness, so that we can get closer to him. Doesn't mean that he doesn't use us, but he's slowing us down so that we can spend time with him. You might remember that Moses was a shepherd for 40 years before he then entered into the biggest ministry alongside with Pharaoh and, and the plagues and getting them out of Egypt. But he was 40 years as a shepherd. Now, those are not wasted years. Those are just different in the purpose of God for the growth of Moses. And likewise, he's going off to Kerith, and he's nearly got the ravens to talk to. And then he goes off to Zarephath, and he's there. It's a bit of a secluded place. 
it's a time for him also to grasp more of who the Lord is. He is pressing further into God. So that's the first thing. But the other reason, oh well, before I move on, I just noticed I need to say this. You know, Billy Graham was asked one day towards the end of his life, what would you do differently now, you know, if you had your time over again? And he said, I would spend less time preaching and more time preparing. Now, that's quite something. Because clearly he was reaching millions of people over those years. And he was really effective. But he said, I would spend less time preaching and more time preparing. Because often the quality of our work in God can take the purposes of the kingdom further if we have deepened our life in God and perhaps heard him more clearly what needs to happen. I think it was also true of Spurgeon, who said, you know, if you had 25 years to, to live, you know, what would you do? He'd said, I'd spend 20 years in preparation. That doesn't mean he doesn't do anything for God in those 20 years of preparation, because the Lord's always wanting to use us in different ways. So although I didn't have um, the fulfillment of the lady with the different colored hair, I spent a lot of time talking to the lady who was selling her candles in the next door. And when she needed to nip off to go and to the toilets or get a coffee or go and buy something for a dog, she said, would you look after my stall? So, you know, I, I got on really well with her. And actually, the stall beyond her, I spent a fair bit of time talking to him as well. And he packed up early, and I said, can I help you carry your stuff to your car, which was a bit of a distance away. You never know where these things are going. You just offer yourself, and you try to show kindness to people. And the Lord can use all of this in his purposes. But here we have Elijah, and he's pressing further into the Lord. And what happened was that this son of this lady, he dies. And I think Elijah is really upset by this because he doesn't know why it's happened. And so this lady said, is it because of my sin? And Elijah said, Nothing to that question, actually, because obviously it wasn't her sin. But I think he was somewhat perplexed of why it was happened. And when these things happen, we need to press further into God. I mean, he'd say, God, what's all this about? That's what it says in the passage. It says he cried out to God. And then it says it again. He cried out to God. Now, you will have been like this. I have, certainly. You know, there might be a family member and you're really troubled about your family member. I know I was really troubled about my daughter some years ago because of things she was going through and I prayed about it and I prayed about it. And then I felt the Lord say, I think you need to fast for three days for this situation. And so I did. I fasted and prayed for three days for my daughter. You see, th people that are close to us, you know, we feel it, don't we? And so we press further into the one that can try and do something about it because we can't. Now, there'll be people here and there's people in your family and you're troubled by them. And sometimes we get so upset and disillusioned that we just give up on the whole process. We think, I won't bother to pray because it's never going to change. Or we can say, I'm going to press further. I'm going to come to the Lord more deeply about this. And he won't only resolve the situation, hopefully, he'll also do something deeper in you. That's the main reason. And then sometimes there are things that are just not resolved, and they go on, and they go on, and they go on. They never get resolved. <laughs> and we wonder about it, and sometimes we give up on them. But these are the times to press further into God. 
or maybe there's a healing that needs to take place. So that's the second thing. Just one other thing about Elijah. Oh, there he is lying on the boy before we get to the third point. Now, did the Lord tell him to go and lie on top of the boy? Did the Lord tell him that? Or after he'd prayed, did he just do the instinctive thing? I think both can be true. You know, sometimes we're just looking for far too much, too much information <laughs> and we're static. But if you've brought something to God, just walk with it and see what happens. Because he's going to be in it. Sometimes we get more details, sometimes we don't. So the third thing to say is that Elijah is knowing God's heart. The Lord has his eye on those who don't yet belong to him. Again, I think this is a very important emphasis for our day. The church in this country is not good at this, but the Lord's trying to help us to get better at it. To have an eye on those who don't yet belong to him. Elijah is sent to a Gentile in a place that's not going to be very kind to him because it's Jezebel's territory. I think because the Lord had this Gentile lady on his heart. Now, you may not remember this, but in Luke chapter 4, when Jesus goes to Nazareth, his hometown, they don't believe in him much. And so Jesus says, no prophet is honoured in his own town. And then he goes on to say, there were plenty of widows in Israel when the famine came. But Elijah only went to a widow in Zarephath, a Gentile, a pagan. And he says there were plenty of people with leprosy in Israel. But actually, Elijah was sent to pray for Naaman, who had his leprosy, who was from Syria. And when the people heard Jesus saying these things, it said they wanted to put him to death. Because these people in Nazareth, who are Jews... They thought, we're not bothered about those Gentiles. It's the Jews that are important. And in churches, we can sometimes have a similar spirit. We can think, well, there are certain people that are worth it and other people that aren't worth it. And sometimes we spend all our time with each other. Fellowship's important. But we don't have an eye for those who don't know the Lord yet. The Lord does. He's got a big eye. In fact, he sends Elijah to Zarephath to this pagan widow because he has his eye on her. And I'll tell you why towards the end, why that's the case. So may I share just something about our neighbours? You might know your neighbours very well. You might pray for them, you might not. My wife and I, we pray for our neighbours. We pray for them every day, actually. And uh, I became the neighbourhood watch person. And I did that so that I could knock on all the doors in our little section and see who was behind the door and say, I've just said I'll be the neighbourhood watch. Do you want to be kept informed? So I got all their names and all their emails, those that wanted to do that. And I send something out when the police send it to me. And then we thought we would just give out Hope magazine to our neighbours and put our telephone number on. Did that for a while. And uh, then with that, we decided that we would offer them a Mark's Gospel. And um, tell them about an Alpha course. Actually... Nobody responded. Did that for several years. Nobody's responded. Did you give up praying for your neighbours? No. And so, coming up to Christmas, 
we decided that we would do something slightly different in our church. We had something called carols and quiz. And so there are a selection of our neighbours that we invited to the carols and quiz. And to our surprise, seven of them, that means seven different people, immediately said, yes, we'll come. Quite surprised me, actually. So there were two, three couples and then a teenager and one of the families. And the day before we were to have the quiz, Ron and Margaret came and knocked on our door and said, we're going to go to a funeral in Bury St. Edmunds tomorrow. I don't think we're going to get back. Sorry, but we're not going to make it. What kind of them to say that? So we said, okay. The teenager didn't turn up, but we got four others. And so on our table, there was my wife, Wendy, and I, and then the other four neighbours. And there were lots of things that we were doing, carols, but also some quizzes. And two or three of us had to go and share a word. And so at one point when I was going to share the word, I just said to my table, it's me next. And so I went to the front and I spoke for about three minutes about how unbelievable it is that Jesus was born. God became a man. How unbelievable that is. And then I went and sat down and they looked at me and they said, hmm, thank you. I could see that they'd been touched and we had some conversation afterwards. I don't know where all that's going to get to. But we continue to pray for our neighbours because you've got to have some credibility of where you live, haven't you? They all know that we're Christians. Because God has an eye on them as well as on me. He loves me and he loves them. I think Elijah's got the heart of God here. He's capturing the heart of God. And what does this lady say right at the end, verse 24? She says, I realize that you are a man of God. She'd got the revelation. She'd seen it. It's great when people see it. One of the ladies I was speaking to yesterday, she was just walking past and I spoke to her and I said, uh, she said, what are you selling? So I said, well, we're selling a readiness to listen to you and we'd be very happy to pray for you. And then she said, oh, you no good praying for me, I'm too wicked. And then she walked off. That's how some people feel, actually. But I trust that in that sort of moment, we were communicating some grace. And it might take a long time, but she might get to a place where that will be different in her life. It's not worth praying for me, I'm too wicked. Here's Elijah, and he has a heart for those who are not yet Christians. And God sends her to one woman, a widow, a long way away from Israel. Okay, just three quick things to say in closing. How do you press further into God? Well, give God time. Because this is only achieved through time. Giving God time. That's the only way it's achieved. Carving out time. I might say to my wife from time to time, I'm, I'm very disciplined in being with the Lord in the beginning of the day, but I'll sometimes say, I'm just going to give some time to prayer. Got to give God time. Because he's touching our hearts and our spirits. He might be speaking to us. If you don't give God time, this will never be true of you. The second thing is, we need to do what he tells us to do. And it's often not easy what he tells us to do. That's the problem. We need to do what he tells us to do. I'm wondering whether we can get some of our neighbours to a, 
an alpha course in our home rather than in church. I'm frightened of it. I'm frightened actually to make that next step. Don't know whether the Lord's saying that or not. Do what God tells you to do. And then the third is expect him to come through with his answers and his power. We often feel so powerless, but in the entering in of doing God's things, that's when the Lord brings his power to bear. Oh, well, God bless Elijah and God bless each one of us as we will walk with him. Amen. Let's be quiet for a moment or two. And if Delia can give me the sheet so I know what the songs are, I'll see where we go in the next handful of minutes. Let's just be quiet before him. The Lord is good and his love endures forever. Just before we sing a song, I don't know whether this will be uh, right or, or wrong or helpful, but maybe there's just somebody that's just holding something. It might be personal for you, in which case take it to heart, but it might be something for the body here. And if there's a, a sense that the Lord has put something on your heart, a scripture or a picture, then uh, just speak that out now and let's do that before we move on. Don't hold back, jump out. Jump out and do that. Picture of somebody. I. Eye. So maybe something to do with an eye, and so there can be prayer for healing on the eye. Anything else before we sing? Yes? I think it was just that verse in the Bible that says that while we were far off, God sent his son. Uh, so we don't, don't have to be good or perfect to be loved. Yeah, um, lovely. Yeah, Romans 5, while we were yet sinners, God died for us. When we were ungodly. Jesus died for us. When we were far off, you know, he drew near to us. Thank you for that. Anybody else? Let's have the music group back up here, or, do, or whatever you call yourself. <laughs> Worship group. Anybody else? Thank you for those contributions that people have made. We're going to sing the goodness of God. And um, if you like to stand. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will say Of the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will say of the goodness of God I love your voice You have led me through the fire Darkest night 
You are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend I have lived in the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful my life you have been so so good with every breath that i am able i will sing of the goodness of god all my life you have been faithful my life you have been so so good with every breath that i am able i will see of the goodness of god your goodness is running after us running after me your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after is running after me with my life laid down i'm surrendered now i give you everything your goodness is running after is running after me all my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God oh, I will sing of the goodness of God I will sing of the goodness of God lovely thing about blessing the Lord, 10,000 reasons. After that, I'll pray a prayer, and if people would like prayer today, I'm sure there are people on the prayer ministry, and so come to the front, and we can pray for you. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh, oh, my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh, my soul, I worship Your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me. Let me be singing when the Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship. 
worship his holy name Sing like never before God, our Father, thank you for your presence. In your presence, which is resting upon us now, we ask that we would know your presence as we go from this place. We want to honor you, Lord, Monday to Saturday. And for those people that will cross our path this week, we pray that we'll be good examples of what it's like to be kind like Jesus. Maybe there are some opportunities that we'll be able to take if you open the doors. And we pray that you would show us that and give us the boldness. And when we're told that Elijah was a man just like us, we pray that you would grow us in our praying. In the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. People would like some prayer. I'm sure there'll be folk who are ready to pray for you. <laughs> 